for you as someone who survived that ordeal who looks back some of the questions from that time have never been answered mr sharma i don't know if you've had a chance to see the series if you have do you understand why so many people are so upset uh, how do you look at it as the only person on this program who was actually there living out that nightmare anil sharma ji uh, good evening uh, barkha ma'am and um, yes i have seen the series uh, i'm just short of uh, uh, half a ep- episode <clears throat> and uh, um, truly speaking uh, there have been a lot of uh, portions which have left me severely disappointed and uh, even bewildered that how can uh, you know so much truth be distorted i know what is coming on the program uh, because uh, people will say it's a work of art you know that this is a general term floating around they will also say that uh, it's as you said fictionalized but then uh, the makers have not distanced themselves from the real story as much as they should have if they really wanted to pre- present a fictionalized account now uh, it was horrific not just for me for uh, the rest of the uh, cockpit and cabin crew for those passengers who were bo- on board for their families it affected a lot uh, uh, of people in the nation uh, you know and uh, i think it's uh, only expected it's along expected lines if uh, so many of them are getting today a little outraged there are also people who will appreciate you know uh, anubhav sena is a uh, well acclaimed uh, filmmaker and uh, he definitely knows his craft very well but this is also a grouse i have against him that if he knows his craft so well why should he have chosen to uh, you know uh, um, distort uh, so much of uh, what happened over there that's one thing quickly it's also about uh, the fact that uh, a bulk of the action happened in the cabin you know uh, once we landed at kandahar the cockpit crew also was made to sit in the cabin a lot of um, terrible incidents were happening over there but they have not been dealt with as much sensitivity and uh, um, the details have not been uh, gone into as much as one would have desired then the, it quickly shifts to the negotiations part and that i think is again um, um, it's a it's a mockery you know, the way they have shown uh, from whatever little i know i have written, uh, written a book which uh, had a forward by mr dobel at a mm-hmm. good, uh, meeting him once he launched the book at iic back in 2014 and uh, also met uh, vivek mr vivek kachu at uh, kandahar airport after we were re- uh, released and a few other uh, bureaucrats people from the intelligence bureau when we were uh, uh, debriefed after we came back so i we you know how much seriousness there was and uh, uh, how much effort goes into whatever they do we will never be satisfied with everything that happens uh, uh, in a given situation but uh, the way this yeah. is can i ask you certainly yeah. you use you've used very strong words you've said that you it's a mockery uh that truth has been distorted the justice has not been done if i had to ask you about one example something that leaps out at you that you think ye to bilkul hi jhoot hai what would that be uh, uh we're talking about uh, obviously i can only um, focus on the um, events shown within the cabin um i can list out actually half a dozen this thing but let me uh, say one which uh, stands out is the fact that the hostess was slapped the only person uh, among the crew who was slapped was a junior most flight person we had mr satish he was actually hit on the back of his neck and uh, um, held by the hair and pushed back into a chair because i th- i felt that they, those guys the hijackers thought they could do this to him they were not rough with the girls at all they were weren't rough with me at all i was frisked at one stage um, very very uh, um shall i say um, they didn't spare any um, part of my body which was not frisked but uh, um, so this is what surprises me that how could they project that as uh, one of the happenings on board are you offended uh, you know one of the criticisms of the series and then i'll open it up is that it has quote unquote whitewashed the terrorism uh, the gravity of the terrorism it's a wishy washy treatment of the terrorists what offends you in particular you know as a survivor what did you feel what is the emotion you'd use to describe what you felt when you watched the series you know the fact that um, um, it's a known fact that the india the might of indian nation was brought down to its knees and uh, one can have a, a debate on that uh, with the government uh, 
failed or uh, was unable mm -hmm. to or uh, did something. But uh, the, uh, as a nation, we brought down to knees and it was, uh, it's, you know, disheartening to, uh, for this to be, uh, I mean, it could also be uh, treated as a subject which can uh, teach us a lesson or two. But uh, I don't know, I uh, somehow feel that um, the, and the, the, the way the, uh, Mr. Doble has been uh, shown to uh, negotiate with uh, the thing. Now, this is a different interpretation. You could say that director chose to give it, but I've known Mr. Doble and I'm sure he was uh, very serious about the way things were. We were getting some uh, information about uh, how the negotiations mm. were going on. So all that uh, leaves me a little disappointed that uh, just in that sense has not been done. So, 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 so you believe it, there's a kind of trivialization of the horror of what Precisely. Am, am I summarizing that accurately? Okay. Before I uh, before I bring Sanjay, who I know has uh, written a long review on on X and even got lost his account for what he wrote, Shubra. Uh, let's bring you in. Uh, you know, now the lens that you bring to, to something that's actually occurred in real life, it's complicated. As a critic, are you looking at the craft? Anil Sharma is looking at this as someone who lived it. Lived it. And it takes you back to that age-old question uh, when something is based on real-life events uh, and it's not a documentary. Uh, the filmmakers may argue that we've only taken that as a starting point. We're not saying that every moment, every scene here is literally true. But then on the other side, this is a wound in the in, in the sort of body politic of the nation, right? It's not a fully healed wound. Many passengers still don't come out and talk about what happened. Anil is one of those rare people today who can. Given, given that it's generally been critically praised, right? Um, now all of this noise, so many people upset, does it make you uh, reconsider your praise for the series? No, it doesn't at all. Um, can I just preface that by, by saying that, you know, when we're looking at um, something that is based on reality, whether it's a web series or a film, it all depends upon what the source material is. Here in this one, it's very, very clearly uh, states upfront, uh, both Anubhav Sinha and his co-writer, that it is based on the account of Captain Devi Sharan, who was piloting, uh, you know, the plane. And, uh, you know, uh, one of our uh, most solid journalists, uh, Frinjoy Chaudhary. So I do not imagine that the, I haven't read the book, so I don't know how true to it. I mean, how true to it that it hues the whole thing. But I did have critique about it it was not like i praised it fulsomely and wholly i had caveats and i can you know i can put them out here and i can also add to that because i just thought the first four episodes if you look at it as pure uh, you know division of uh, what was happening through till the end six episodes the first four were in so many ways they were slack it picks up and it really sort of rescues itself and uh, in the last two episodes when things actually are in play. Before that, I think what, in fact, I, I'm going to be uh, a, one of those contrarian people who says that, you know, the uh, Anubhav Sinha has not been as sharp or as, uh, you know, as subversive as he could have been because he's being very careful when he's putting a finger on or he's pointing out that there were all kinds, the multiplicity of agencies that was roaming around in these, milling about in this uh, sort of a, a kind of a crisis management group. It looked less than a crisis management group than people just figuring out what to do as they were going on. They were like learning on the job. There was the IB, there was the raw, you know, and there was NSG and there were all these politicians and we kept hearing about PM Saab and we kept hearing about no, nowhere did they have actually shown that it actually has any idea in their heads. You know, so it is, I, I feel that it could have been much sharper. It could have been so much more, um, you know, sort of cutting edge in terms of actually saying, rolling out the fact that it was a complete intelligence failure. It was, and it's still today. I, I don't even think that even that book, even that book, has everything in it i suspect that a lot of it is just going to be completely buried uh you know in people's memories so, so, you, so you're saying sorry to interrupt you you're saying no, that actually I just, 
I just felt yeah. I just wanted to just complete this thought, Bhatha, that you know when everybody says that it is real life. Yes, all creators are always going to take uh, creative liberties. Yes, but it depends upon how much. And here in this case, you can see you can see that there are some words are being used that would not have been used 25 years ago. Where in the world would journalists wear lanyard with ID card 25 years ago? I don't mm -hmm. remember. And that whole, in fact, that if you talk about journalists, that whole segment should have been just basically picked up and thrown out of the series because it adds nothing. And it just shows, you know, you were yeah. in a newsroom. Uh, Maya was in a newsroom. We were all in newsrooms and none of this, this kind of uh, obfuscation, not knowing what to do, this kind of, you know, none of this. It, it, it is ridiculous. In fact, even when they talk about these two big, Nasiruddin Shah and Pankaj Kapoor, you have these two hmm. great actors in a frame. Those portions are, they could have been fantastic. And I felt that they were one of the weaker parts of the series. So if you really want to critique it, let's get all yeah. of these lenses, right? Okay. Okay, so basically what I'm hearing you say is that in fact Anubhav Sinha was maybe too careful and some bits were just too caricatured, not getting the tone tonality right. But that's a very different lens, Sanjay Lazar, from the one that Anil Sharma is looking at it through. And I understand that. Shubhra is looking at it as a movie critic. Anil is living, looking at it as, I live this. You are today looking at it as someone who's from the airline, but also a victim of, of a terror attack that took your family out. And, and I understand that the sensitivities would be very different. Sanjay, your quick take. I was shocked. Can we watch... unmute, Sanjay? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sanjay, again. Yeah. Thanks. No, I was, I was very much, uh, you know, I'm a victim of a terrorist attack. Uh, I was very much in, in the airline. At that time, I was the union leader. And we lived this from the outside. So when watching oh. this series, I was shocked because it was based on the captain's book and also partly relied on Anil's book. And it's it's it doesn't really add up. Frankly, lots of aviation glitches, lots of, you know, goofballs. I mean, really shocking bloopers by Anubhav. It's a glitzy Bollywood movie, no doubt. OK, let's oh. understand. It should have been put you know in bold that this is fiction. Please don't believe it. It's only emanated from the thread of a hijack you know look at look at the dubai airport it's a dubai airfield mind you it's an air force base they're showing a pakistani army guy who's sitting in an air traffic control tower reading the quran to to the hijackers i mean it's a joke uh you know there's so much that didn't happen and we know that stroke talbot and maktoum sheikh maktoum were there jaswan singh was was guiding kc singh outside and you're telling me a Pakistani army guy is, is on, it, it was, it whitewashed ISI, it whitewashed Pakistan. And I have on record Pakistani YouTubers who, and, and state actors who claim that it was the ISI. Yet this guy goes and makes this. So it's obviously sensationalism. And I think we should take it for the pinch of salt. We've missed, a lot of us have missed the wood for the trees when we only talk of Shankar, Hari and, you know, Bola and all that. Uh, let's look at the bigger picture. They will try to make our government look like an idiot. Of course, we made mistakes, but we weren't the idiots that we were. They may show us. We've done Kargil. We had, you know, uh, other attacks after that, before that. So it's it's not a poker. It's not that. What was the what was the most egregious part? Or oh, clearly, it was egregious for you. What was the most egregious very, very mistake egregious. you think? You know, so the, what do you think was the most egregious mistake that the series makes? You know, if I spoke on an aviation terms, uh, the aircraft trying to land on a road, which was true. But at 300 feet, he turns 180 degrees and lands on an airport. In political terms, he's interspersed, you know, his fiction shots with Vajpayee ji coming out of seven RCR, Jaswan Singh and and Brijesh ji at a at a briefing. Egregious, right? Fiction, right? Fictionalized. Don't make it out to be a docudrama, you know. And that's where I felt really hurt. You, they made Ajit Doval look like a fool. He's our current oh. NSA. I mean, for God's sake, uh, you may not like the politics of these people. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you bring down the entire country. I, I'm, I'm definitely very offended by that. I put out a long tweet that, that got me blocked, but it's now up again. Yeah. But you can look at the so, aviation aspects. Yeah. So, General Katoch, it's, in, it's important that Sanjay, Anil, Shubra, none of them actually think that what's making the most noise on social media is the important point to them, which is that these code names, uh, Burger, Bhola, Shankar, uh, MHA documentation from 1999 actually shows, official release from the Ministry of Home Affairs, there it is up on the screen, shows that these were actually the code names. I'm sure Anil will also want to come in on this in a bit. 
were actually the code names that were used by the hijackers. But somehow this has been made the main issue. What Sanji and Anil at least are saying, Shubhra is looking at it as craft. What Sanji and Anil are saying on facts, there are many other problems. This is not the problem. How do you look at it, General Katoj? Well, thank you, Barkha. Barkha, the first thing I want to say was that this is a work of fiction. Hmm. Now, this is the basic problem I have. If you want, don't don't make a work of fiction on a real life event and then, you know, uh, make people believe that it has happened. It didn't happen that way. I mean, that has been amply brought out. So if it is a work of fiction, the first thing is, please don't call it IC814. You can give it some other name. You can base it in Sweden. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. But then if it's a work of fiction and they put it in very small letters, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, once I came to know that I had to, uh, that I'll be uh, coming on your program. Um, yeah, I saw a little bit of this and then I, uh, you know, I, uh, I work with a bunch of uh, researchers and three of them had seen the whole thing. And I asked mm -hmm. them their free and frank opinion. I said, listen, how do you, how do you like the, uh, how do you like the series? And not one of them liked it. You see, no, th these are individual tastes. Some people may like it. Some people may not. That doesn't really matter. But my thing was because I saw the first part only. I didn't have time to go through the whole thing. I saw the first part. And I think I find this very objectionable. Please don't call it a work of, uh, you know, a work of fiction and then base it on real life events, you know, uh, and, and, and try to make the people believe but, it. This is one. But does, the, no, but, but, but does that mean, sorry, does that mean, sorry, to just to follow up on that, does that mean that nobody can ever make a fictionalized account of a historic event? No, make a fictionalized account. But, you know, it has to be based on some logic. I, I mean, let me just give you an example. You know, you okay. make a film of this, you make a film of the 71 war, right? And then you have the surrender ceremony and you change the name of the general who has surrendered from General Niazi to General Dhruv Katoch. Well, you see, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. You see, don't yeah. do those yeah. things. Now, we know that these five hijackers, they had pseudonyms. I mean, the film should have brought that out. Everybody knows what the truth is. What is your, I mean, what is that hijack? This is one. Hmm. So, you hmm. know, as far as that name is concerned, they could have certainly brought it out that the hijackers, these are, our, these are the fake names. They could have brought it out in some conversation. But they didn't mm. do that, you know. And I think that was deceitful. That, that's my point is there's an element of deceit in this. Then the, basically there are two points which I, uh, uh, I feel very strongly about. One, don't run down your institutions. You see, this is what we have got. You know, when some people run down the Indian army, I tell them, listen, we are your army. I'm not somebody else's army. If I'm not good enough, then I'm not, you, you know, then what, what else do you have? Make me better. I'm, I don't belong to Pakistan or to China. I belong to the people of India. So if I'm not good enough, then we should do as a society, you know, make me better. This is one. Number two, you know, why are you trying to, uh, you know, you know, give some sort of a character to the terrorists that they are some sweet boys, you know, they're looking after the passengers and, you know, they're giving them chocolates and goodies and all that. Come on. This is the worst scum which is produced. You know, just a few days uh, when, we, when we look into what happened in Israel in October, you know, when people go and kill 2,000 people, civilians in cold blood, and yet we have people coming out and justifying them. I'm not talking about uh, actions which took place later or earlier, but you know, this particular yeah. action. Don't justify the things which cannot be justified. And here is where I have okay. a grouch with the producer. These people are terrorists. For God's sake, don't glorify terrorism. We have enough problems with terrorism. Don't make them out into some human beings. Okay, okay. okay. The and all that. that is my point. Okay, I, 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 I'm going to put aside Israel and Gaza, because it will take us down into a very different conversation. So we'll just park that. But I take your larger point that you believe that the terrorists have, in a way, been romanticized, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the kind of Vaseline filter, a diffused filter treatment of them. Uh, it's, it's what others have called whitewashing. Maya, all of this is OK. I think everybody is allowed to hate, be offended by, repulsed by, uh, you know, something that someone has made. Should the government be summoning Netflix? That is a different debate, right? I think I think Anil Sharma, Sanjay Lazar, General Katoch have every right to sit here and say, look, we hated this. We hated this. It was a trivialization of what we have lived. Should the government be summoning Netflix? Any government, not this government, any government. Simple answer, no, I don't think so. Uh, they should not be summoning Netflix or the film director or the people who have written the book. I mean, they should summon Srinjoy as well uh, in that case. Um, or Captain Devi Sharan, I don't know. I, 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 like Shubhra said, I've not read the book either, but uh, I sat and watched 
the entire i binge watched the entire six episodes uh, last week and shortly after that i went and looked up my own reports on kandahar um the last time i think i did something um i referenced kandahar in a piece looking at 10 years of 2611 but the last time i did something in detail on kandahar was in 2009 10 years of the anniversary of the hijack where um it's online it's on the ndtv website i mean there's uh, my interviews yeah. with rajesh mishra and ajit doval your interview with just one singh which has been referenced mm -hmm. in that show uh, dr sanjeev chibber the family member who came into that press conference i have very vivid memories of that week uh, i think most importantly because it was the week i had survived an ltt suicide blast attempt in colombo and i had come back to delhi and 5 days later we were thrown into this hijack that had taken place mm -hmm. and uh, even though as newsroom we were scrambling Uh, at that time to cover this story uh, i don't think one can you know we can talk about whitewashing uh, the the pakistanis or whitewashing the way things unfolded i don't mean to diminish anybody's personal experience about a hijack about the trauma that they go through as individuals or the families that may have uh, suffered this entire one week ordeal i can simply tell you as a journalist who was covering that story uh i don't think that the show whitewashed either the pakistani involvement or the competence or lack of competence of the government of india i think we were all caught unawares the governments the public the citizenry the families everybody was caught un unawares and i actually feel that as a technique the interjecting of real archival footage with the narrative mm. of a, fiction, a fictionalized plot uh yeah. drove that point further uh, the the fact of the pakistani involvement was made very clear from the first scene according to me where the indian intelligence officer in kathmandu is actually chasing and and following up on a lead that he believes the pakistanis are engineering a plot in kathmandu so i think that was kind of laid bare at the very get go uh it was it was mentioned in the film that it was only three countries in the world the uae saudi and pakistan that recognized the taliban which is why uh they they ended up going to kandahar it was made clear that the hijackers themselves felt that lahore would receive them to uh to take in the fuel and were upset about the fact that musharraf said no i'm sorry i cannot have this landing it yeah, in love yeah. without just one single yeah. intervention we know a lot of those things happened they did happen in delhi we reported on them